I am back talking about Survivor Maryland Major Conflict. Today is the post-merge. Uh, I don't have a slide covering like the short version of why I like it, but uh, I will say it here. Uh, it's an interesting post-merge. There's a lot of neat stuff that happens, some big shifts in both the uh, way the season is going to pan out <laughs> and how different players play the game um we come into this post merge with doug as uh kind of like both the safest player the most active social player least targeted and he has two idols so doug you know kind of has all the cards everyone's kind of it's doug's world we're all just playing in it um keep that in mind but also everyone else is still playing yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. I've got Doug in the corner. Uh, keep an eye on that in a few slides. Sadie and Doug want to downplay being a pair. They catch up with Dane, who feels good about them. Uh, he talks about in confessional he doesn't want to be the strongest or weakest player. Kind of wants to have a nice balanced out threat level. Um, there are little notes shown to be hidden at the challenge spot. Tim finds one. Uh, they all merge. The challenge winner gets to gift someone a clue to a new idol, something that I always like. Anders also says that it's a, uh, a new idol. So a third idol out there that Doug does not have. Uh, important to know. To memory slash cube challenge, Angie wins immunity, gives the clue to Sadie. Uh, she says she picked Sadie because they made eye contact, and she wants to show um, Sadie that she wants to work with her. Tim's note that he found was a hint to an idol hidden at the challenge, but he can't get it now because the challenge is over. It's been a man to talk about who's a threat and who they need to take out. Tim tells Doug he feels more comfortable with him compared to Santi and Sadie when it comes to sitting at the end, and he thinks he can't take out all of the threats while still having votes at the end. Uh, Doug is more loyal to Tim now, and Tim also pushes final through with him and Santi, so that's at play. Um, interesting insight from Tim, I would say, feeling like, uh, because he's, in his mind, is allied with a lot of threats, but knows, you know, if I take out all of it, my, my friends and allies that are threats, they're not going to want to vote for me at the end. Uh, we'll see how it, it shapes out for Tim. Tim has a lot of allies at this point, so I, I get where he's coming from, but still going to play hard. Uh, Doug and Santi talk about who to boot and who to work with. They think Morgan is the move. She's just kind of an easy vote, has fewer connections than a lot of other players. Josh has a Halloween party, and he and Amanda talk about his position in the game. She mentioned Sadie is a threat to take out at some point. So Josh and Amanda potentially bonding. Let's see how that shapes out on this slide. Uh, Josh immediately tells Sadie, Doug, and Santi... <laughs> So now Sadie wants Amanda out. Uh, the rest have still kind of preferred Morgan going as an easier vote. Uh, Morgan working with less people compared to Amanda. Doug and Morgan meet up. She says she knows she's an easy vote, but tells him she's not the smart vote. There are other people to get out. Uh, she wants it to be an Amanda vote. Uh, talks about this with pretty much everybody else. She talks to Santi, who tells her he's going to go with the majority. Uh, Angie and Santi catch up, and, you know, they're still cool. Uh, Doug and Angie meet up. She likes him and thinks he's a threat, but someone that could have her back. Uh, and Angie gets frustrated by everyone wanting to go with the easy Morgan vote. They talk about how Morgan's the easy vote. She says the smart move is Amanda. Uh, Tim says he doesn't think old lines will stick together past this vote. There's a lot more at this tribal. Uh, it's a lot of Morgan throwing Amanda under the bus and Amanda questioning why. Uh, it's not super relevant yet. <laughs> uh, Morgan and Amanda get votes. Morgan and Amanda get votes. And then some more. And then Morgan. And then Morgan. Um, I believe it's just Angie and Abby, I think, that vote for Amanda. And everyone else votes Morgan. Morgan, I think, before the swap, was in an amazing spot where she had Jam and all of the information on that tribe pretty much through Jam. But at the swap, uh, because of that, you know, Angie and Jasmine weren't initially targeted. She was. There's just really no way to recover after that. But 
Uh, Morgan, someone that I think had a lot of potential too. Um, I, I really liked her her positioning pre-swap. And um, had a man who gone with them. I mean, her positioning now would be good. But Morgan's another player that will be back for the next season. I'm excited to see how she does. Because I think uh, if she plays a little bit more actively or... Um, makes just a few more strong relationships. I think she could be pretty good. Amanda is pressed that Morgan called her out and made her a target. She also trusts Dane the most now. He did a salt shaker motion when Morgan was throwing Amanda under the bus, which she appreciated. Uh, Abby was the third man in the boat. Tim and Angie meet up and talk about potential moves. He mentions there are lots of strong players still. He mentions Zug, Sadie, and Santi. Interesting. Tim and Dane touch base to talk about trusting each other. Dane's worried and confessional because there are other stronger players than him in the game still. Uh, and him and Tim talk about being mid-tier players. You know, players that are playing, but they're not necessarily easy votes, but not like the big threats to win. I think this is a good spot to be in at this point in the game. But I also think valid to be concerned about that moving forward. Because you could either be picked off after the easy boots are gone, uh, or uh, lose out at the end if there are too many big threats left. So, good to recognize it. Josh meets with Dane, but in confessional, seems against him, Tim, and Amanda. <laughs> uh, he mentions wanting to do better than Jen, one player, Micah, who is his roommate. Uh, so there's that. We'll see. Uh, it's the superlatives challenge. Uh, we it, It's the same as... Um, the previous season's version where you have to vote with the majority and everyone that gets an answer right pick, takes a turn to uh, mark or knock someone out and you get three strikes, that sort of deal. First question was who at least deserves to be here, which went to Angie, which to me is absolutely wild. I think Angie's been playing pretty hard uh, and pretty well to stay alive at this point, uh, but she immediately gets voted and is immediately taken out of the challenge. Uh, most likely to stab you in the back went to Amanda. I don't agree with that one either. Uh, most likely to win, Doug, yeah. Most trustworthy, Delarab and Abby. Uh, I think it's funny that it's both of them because they're roommates who probably share information. Dark Horse, Josh. Most attractive, Santi. Uh, no chances of winning went to Angie and Dane. Both wild answers to me. Um, do not agree with those. Who needs mute button went to Tim. Uh, I, I I think Tim's fine, but I you know <laughs> I don't know. He seems funny. Uh, Sadie wins immunity. Tim got an idle clue during the challenge uh, and showed Doug. Doug says he thinks he's playing a good fourth place game. Doug is very worried, and I I don't think this is the first time it's come up. It's definitely not the last. Um, where Doug is aware that he's playing a good game, but is also aware that people will catch on and he could be cut right before the end. Uh, Santi tells Doug he's underestimating people. Amanda knows she's on the chopping block. She talks to Josh about voting anyone else. Uh, Amanda and Sadie talk. Amanda says she didn't want Sadie out, but that Sadie wouldn't take her to the end. Josh and Sadie talk about booting Amanda. Sadie's happy that Santi and Doug got good superlatives, so their threat levels will go up. Uh, she's a little concerned, not about being a fourth placer, but about just being a big threat. Doug floats. Angie's name to Josh, but he pushes Amanda's. Doug doesn't want to vote. Uh, why did I say it like that? Doug, <laughs> my brain short-circuited and my mouth just slurred too many words together there. Um, Doug does not want to vote out Amanda, but everybody else does. He realizes that keeping Amanda in the game so far and like kind of uh, putting out other targets hasn't been super worth it for him. So he's like, at this point, it's fine. Like I've tried to keep her and it's not really getting me anywhere. Tim and Doug talk about putting Josh soon. Santi and Amanda talk. She mentions thinking she's going. He says he's playing low key. He doesn't want to make a big move. She mentioned Sadie dropped his name. So that's interesting. Sadie told Doug that Josh wants one of them out soon. He tells this to Santi. Santi in confessional talks about working with Doug. Now he doesn't want to mess up their roommate ship. An important piece of information that I learned through the uh, post-episode recap discussion things is that 
Uh, this season f was filmed in the fall, so imagine how awkward it would be if this season played out badly and they had to live together for another semester. That would be awkward. <laughs> but other stuff from this slide, so uh, Josh has thrown out Doug and Santi's names as targets to Sadie. Um, Tim and Doug have talked about booting Josh. Um, Amanda's in trouble. That's that's the gist of it. <laughs> uh, Doug tells Tim about the Pascala idol, lies that he only told him, and then Tim sees a text from Sadie talking about the idol, so Tim knows that Doug's lying and has an idol. Doug, Tim, and Santi talk, and Angie calls Doug. Uh, they just talk about voting Amanda. Tim talks about Sadie calling the shots and shutting things down and wanting to take Delaram to the end. Sadie allegedly mentioned being like Katie and Alex to Doug and joked about voting him out. <sighs> now I love Katie and Alex. But I wouldn't want someone to tell me like, yeah, we can work really well together and then I'll vote you out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I don't know. Doug just says that she said this. We don't know for sure. I mean, probably did say that. Uh, but uh, yeah, don't don't put it out there. Oh man, uh, Amanda goes home, but uh, I, there's no point in hiding another easy vote. Uh, at tribal, they talk about how it's another easy vote. Tim says it's Amanda. Says that it's not side versus sides. They all like each other. Amanda says Morgan painted a nice big red X her back and morgan nods happily from the jury side of things uh, amanda paints a big target on sadie's back and says she's voting for delaram they vote delaram gets two votes uh, amanda gets all the other votes uh amanda i don't dislike amanda um she's kind of an early target she did talk about not liking to vote with the girls which isn't great you don't really want to hear that uh she did come on one of the she, she was on the the episode discussion after this where she talks about like yeah I was, I was in college and i was younger and didn't trust girls and i i wish i could like she she definitely has changed and grown from that um so if you are a viewer who's like i hate that this girl doesn't want to work with girls people change you know it, it, stuff happens people grow and learn uh i appreciate that amanda fought for her spot she was always trying to play the game and uh didn't want to she didn't just roll over and die so i want to give her credit for that but another easy vote unfortunately but again i think part of what makes the season fun f for me is there are a lot of big targets and names out there they are somehow still making it work they aren't being targeted and there's a lot of uh name is being thrown out and uh distrust going around which i like anyways sadie pitches dane to delaram and abby delaram wants to have a five with doug santi sadie and abby sadie wants to uh talks to them about how doug is pushing tim and how they need josh uh sadie lets them know about doug's idol she only knows about one of them though Abby wants out Dane since she doesn't know him. <laughs> Angie says everyone's talking to her since she's on the bottom. Abby tells Angie she likes Sadie but can't fully trust her. And the Doug's faction is the strongest. Uh, Santi and Dane talk. Dane says they're, there are bottom tier players, but once they're out, he's going to be in trouble. Kind of like what I was saying earlier. It's probably where I got the idea of that. from like, uh, If you're a mid-tier player and all the bottom tier players are going home, what happens when they're all gone? Where does that put you? Um, Santi feels good about Dane, Doug, and Tim. Dane and Doug talk. They talk about voting out Josh. Doug, in confessional, uh, talks about how he and Sadie are the big power players, and they argue about who's going to go home every time. Sadie sent Doug an idol clue while sending a fake clue to everybody else. Angie thinks everyone is dumb for knowing the threats but doing nothing about it. And she wants out Doug. And then she wins the dizzy bat immunity and then gives Doug the idol clue. <laughs> Which is confusing, based off the thing that she just said before the challenge, but we move on. Uh, Josh in confessional says he woke up to a streak of texts from Katie, not Katie, from Sadie, uh, who texted him stuff meant for Doug about getting him out. 
uh, and then she apologized and sent screenshots from her and Doug about getting Dane out. So Sadie uh, accidentally texts Josh stuff about getting him out and then, and you know, tried to backpedal with, no, we also want Dane out. <laughs> uh, Doug finds the third idol. Sadie knows he has it. Doug has three idols. Uh, every idol in this game is owned by Doug. <laughs> it's nuts, dude. He has so much power, it's insane. Uh, Santi doesn't want Sadie's final five with Delarom and Abby. Santi and Josh meet, and he says Amanda told him that Josh was after him. Josh in confessional says he knows Santi and Doug are huge threats, and getting them out has crossed his mind. Josh tell Abby, tells Abby that he's nervous now. <laughs> Josh wants Stain out since he's a number for Tim. Uh, Abby knows that Doug has two idols. Josh wants to make a move on Doug. This round or next. Doug and Angie talk. She wants to keep Josh in. She asks why he wants Josh out, not Sadie. And he says, Sadie's not voting against me yet. Valid. Uh, Doug thinks Angie and Dana are threats since they scheme. Tim wants him to idle out Sadie. Sadie tells Angie he's after Dane. Angie doesn't get why Sadie and Doug aren't after each other. <laughs> I I think it's I think Doug said it pretty well. Like, we're not voting against each other yet, so I, I don't know. You know, if you're a big threat, it, I think it helps you to keep other big threats in, especially if you aren't uh, worried about each other just yet. Anyways, Sadie wants Dane out. She says it isn't strategic and mentions how he talks to her. Uh, she specifically says, like, stop trying to manipulate. Just like the way he texts or talks her, uh, talks to her, uh, she isn't about it. Angie recognizes that Sadie's still tight with Doug and Tim. Angie and Santi talk. He says he'll do what she wants, but prefers booting Josh uh, since he dropped his name. Angie says the smaller players are getting picked off, and Santi says Josh isn't a small player. Uh, Angie is nervous about them flipping on her before five if she goes with them, and Santi in confessional says he does want Angie in the game uh, until five, if not further. So, uh, the way it seems to be set up is that Doug, Tim, Dane, and Santi are going to vote against Josh, who's thrown their names out, while Sadie, Delaram, Abby, and Josh are going to vote for Dane. With Angie kind of in the middle, she's wary of the five, uh, of this five, because she thinks the guys could be more loyal to each other. Um, but she also knows that Sadie's not going to go for Doug, so it's interesting. Um, two big players on opposing sides that aren't after each other. <laughs> it, it's weird. Uh, I don't think Josh is a big name player. I think. Similar to Dane, he's kind of like a middle tier player, uh, but Dane's a bit more active and successful. <laughs> uh, but that's where we're at. And Doug has three idols. Uh, Sadie at, at Tribal Council. Sadie's asked about Amanda petting a target on her back, and she feels safe. Santi's asked about the big majority of votes, and he says he doesn't know. <laughs> Those liars. They they lie so much at Tribal Council this season. It, it's a it's very different from Faith just calling everyone out. Um, but it's fine. Tim and Dane talk about potential sides. The uh, classic, it's an individual game, line gets dropped. Idols come up and Anders says, 30 are in the game and none have been played. They're all in Doug's pocket. Uh, <laughs> Dane says people have been voting out of fear and that the jury will take that into account. Uh, Abby says, I'm not voting out of fear, I just don't know you, which is hilarious to me. Uh, I love that. Abby, again, not the most active player, but occasionally says stuff that is very funny. No idols get played. Dane gets four votes. Josh gets four votes. Who is Angie siding with? Who is voted out? Josh. Josh, the man with four idol clues and no idol. Uh, dropped some names of allies and got taken out. Uh, I would say this comes down to Sadie protecting Doug and therefore also kind of Santi. Um, Josh could have been safe if he hadn't dropped their names, I think. I think Dane... Could have been another unanimous vote, potentially. Maybe not. It could have been, like, Abby or Delaron, maybe, but... Or Angie. It could have been a lot... Well, Angie was immune. It could have been a lot of people. Um, 
but I will give Josh credit for, he had some good connections. He got this far because of the Santi connection and then Doug and um, throwing Amanda under the bus helped them get through another round. Um, but wanting to make a big move, take out a big player and being vocal about it to a big player that's loyal to the other one didn't help us case so Josh goes home here. But another player that I would say wasn't a big player, but was trying uh, actively. Sadie is annoyed at Doug, also Delarum, as they were not aware that he was not voting with them. Angie thinks there's a way to split up the guys, but it tells them she's with them. So Angie picked her side, but it's going to work with them that side to break it up. Dana in confessional says he knows he's at the bottom of that five. Uh, Sadie said Doug was selfish, but also wants Final Five with them. Tim wants Sadie out. Doug and Santi are hesitant, but seem to know that's the move. Uh, at the challenge, it's the poll challenge, which is normally like Final Six. But I like it, so I, I'm happy it's here. Abby drops after a minute. Dane says they should all put their tongues on the poll, which is something that I've probably thought every time I've watched this. Also, probably something that's been said before, but that's okay. The other room drops after about five minutes. Sadie says to Abby she wants Dane, and if not, then Angie. And Sadie drops. Santi slips in a very silly way. Dane says he'll buy Angie cookies for saving his butt last week. He also says it's colder than his ex-girlfriend's heart. And then that he does not have an ex-girlfriend. Uh, Doug drops. Tim drops. Tim checks under the table for an idol, and nothing is there. Dane tells Angie he has her back, and he wants the win, and he wants Sadie out. Dane is trying very hard to make Angie let him win. Uh, he talks about having Doug, Tim, and Santi, and she says Sadie and Doug talk. She also says Sadie probably wants her out. Uh, so they're both nervous. They both know Sadie's targeting them, and even though they have their five, they're still nervous about their five. Angie more so than Dane. Angie seems to consider dropping if he doesn't tell anyone it was a deal. They talk about avoiding rocks. Uh, she asks for an idol clue. Angie drops. Dane wins and gives her the idol clue. Uh, Dane Confessional says he made himself more of a presence and he wants final three with Tim and Angie. Dane's nervous about Doug and Santi. He trusts him but recognizes his position's weak. Talks to him about how he thinks he could have gone out last week. Tim talks about wanting Sadie out and how she said the bottom three players stayed in the poll the longest. And the bottom three players, uh, according to her word, Tim, uh, Dane, and Angie. And he does not like that. And I don't blame him. Tim and Confessional really want Sadie out. She's a threat and it locks Doug in with his side. Uh, Tim and Angie talk about wanting Sadie out. Tim wants to split on Abby and Sadie in case of an idol. Tim talks to Santi about booting Sadie. Santi doesn't want to uh, do this without Doug, but Tim does anyways. Uh, I, I tried to snap a good picture, but they're, they're a lot more. Tim's like, ah, and Santi's like, no, it's, it's funny. Um, Santi talks about in confession how the game's getting harder and harder. The lines are getting blurrier and blurrier getting snapchats uh doug is with tim and talks to sadie on the phone doug tells dane that the other side wants angie tim's voting abby they want sadie doug in confessional says he doesn't feel great about angie and that his conversation with her was like 20 questions i think this was an episode or two ago but um she does ask him a lot of questions <laughs> but i don't know i love i like being asked a lot of questions so you know it's probably stressful in survivor though, especially if you're doug uh, Doug wants to split up Delarum, Abby, and Sadie, but he doesn't want Sadie to be the one that goes. Um, he talks about how he's controlled the game with Sadie and that she'd be mad if she got booted before Dane. Tim and Dane talk about booting Sadie without Doug. Sadie says this tribal is more complicated with Dane being safe, but she wants Angie to go still. Santi tells her he wants Delarum or Abby, and Angie has had his back. He hasn't worked with that duo. Uh, Santi says about Doug, I don't want to get him out, I want to beat him. Sadie and Confessional doesn't want to throw Doug under the bus. Santi, Tim, Dane, and Angie are trying to talk Doug in to voting out Sadie. Uh, he is pushing back very hard at Tribal. Dilaram and Abby talked about being left out of the vote. Anders asks Tim if it's a five versus three, and he says that's fair to say. 
Ding talks about pushing himself for the challenge. Angie says she's always in danger of going home. Sadie says she thinks she's gonna go home. Uh, Dane and Delaram get into it a bit. He was talking smack at the challenge she didn't like. Uh, Anders does a, a, a very good impression of a, a, a bitter jury voting. Um, I don't remember the exact line, but it was very funny. Okay, okay. That happened with the pre-merge one, too. I don't know what's going on. Abby says she knows Doug has an idol he found at a challenge. Uh, Doug says he loves everyone a lot and that it's hard. Santi says even when it seems clear-cut, it isn't easy and the votes weigh on your conscience. Who's it gonna be? We've got our jurors there. The idols get played. Sadie gets three votes. Angie gets three votes. Abby gets a vote. <laughs> <laughs> but Sadie's voted out. Uh, a big, a quote-unquote big player uh, gets taken out. I believe we're at, this was the final, final eight. So Sadie goes here at eight. Um, I think Sadie, I, I said quote-unquote big player, but Sadie has been a big player. Um, not as much control as Doug, but uh, kind of, had a lot of loyalty with adding Dalaram, it seemed, um, and was calling the shots to an extent. Um, I think taking her out f makes great sense for everyone except Doug, honestly, uh, except Dalaram and Abby, but um, if you're Tim and Santi, it pulls in Doug closer, uh, eliminates him from potentially flipping. Um, if you're Dana and Angie, I mean, she's straight up targeting you. <laughs> <laughs> and is more loyal to Doug, who you also kind of won out, so makes sense for them, but Sandy is a player I always thought was complicated. She uh, had a lot of control, but also was being more actively targeted than I'd say anyone else at this point in the game. Doug's name has been brought up here and there now, um, but hers a lot more so, so, and she's rubbed the people the wrong way a lot more, so. Uh, she was an interesting player. I don't know if I'd say she was a good player, uh, but a force in the season for sure. And uh, it leaves it leaves everybody else in an interesting spot. Abby apologized to Doug for outing one of his idols. She knows about two out of his three. Doug tells Abby he still feels good about her and Delaram. Abby mentions Dane still her target. Doug thinks Delaram and Abby wouldn't work with Dane or Angie. Cut to Abby telling Angie she wants to go with her to final five. I love that sort of, I love that kind of ending. Uh, <laughs> she says in confessional she could get Dane, could get Dane too to go against Doug. Oh, okay. I was like, why did I write it like that? Angie tells Abby that the five of the guys could choose each other over her. Abby told uh, Angie about Doug's idols. Tim talks to Doug about going for Abby. Tim says um, Doug is better than a Matt survivor, but wants to take Doug. Uh, but wants Doug to take him to the end. Doug feel, Tim feels safe with Doug, and rightfully so, I'd say. He says he goes back and forth on Doug, and then he sees how emotionally attached to the game he is, and... Uh, it would be really hard to turn on him, which is valid. Doug talks about Dane being someone who could lose votes for how he's talked to people. Uh, he proposes without proposing. Final three with Dane and Tim to Dane. He pitches Abby to Dane. Tim thinks a girl would get the girl's votes at the end. Uh, I don't think that's accurate or, or based in much, but all right. Tim thinks he could beat Doug and that Doug has burned a lot of bridges. Potentially. Tim says he's more attached to Doug than Santi in the game since they've worked together longer. Santi gave Doug a fat hug, seeing how sad he was about Sadie. Uh, Doug talks to Santi about getting Dane out since he could go with Tim and Angie. They talk about Dane potentially wanting Santi out. Doug wants Delarum and Abby in the game, but Santi hasn't worked with them. Santi in confessional says he went from a big threat and target, um, kind of coming into the merge too laying under the radar. Uh, Santi's threat level's gone down. Says he won't backstab Doug, but will still make his own moves. At the challenge, it's trivia about the game and running and dominoes, and Doug wins immunity. Doug is safe at the final seven and is heading into the final six with three immunity idols. Dan and Angie walk off. Angie tells him that Abby will tell her 
Then Doug has two idols. Dane Professional says Doug has the most power and is running everything. Yeah. Angie tells Dane she wants final three with him and Tim. Angie says she wants to work with Delarama and Abby, but knows that Delarama is close with Doug. Uh, Abby has to leave for a few days for Quidditch stuff and wanted to make a move against Santi. But since Doug's safe, it could be used against her. Doug says that Dane was vague when talking to him. It seems like he wants him or Santi out. Doug wants to pull in Delarama and Abby with Santi to target Dane. Uh, Doug has a funny confession about realizing he's worked with almost everyone since day one. He's like, I've been good with Tim and Delaram and Santi. He just kind of keeps going, and it's accurate. Santi's down to get Dane out. Uh, they haven't worked together super seriously. Delaram seems to want him out too, and a roommate, uh, ro I almost said romance, a roommate alliance is proposed. Delaram in confessional wants Doug out. Uh, she thinks about making a move against Santi. Poses it to Dane. Dane's worried about Doug having an idol, though. Uh, Delarum's like, he does have an idol. Abby was not lying. Uh, but Delarum says after the conversation that it seemed fake, and she also tries pitching Santi to Tim. And Tim is honest. He's like, uh, Santi's with me. We're not working against each other. Uh, Abby's not with me. But after whatever it goes, maybe we could work together. I think Delarum didn't seem to be into it I, if i was playing the game i'd kind of love that i'd be like all right <laughs> that's that's fair it's i appreciate the honesty i don't know i would like that it's funny though uh dane's worried about doug having two idols and then doug would take abby and delaram to a final tribal council dane tells santi over the phone that delaram is after him santi likes the roommate alliance but if delaram is after him then he's gonna have to flip on it dane tells doug he's cool with it if he has an idol in confessional, he says he wants Abby out since it weakens Doug's plan and taking her to the end. Uh, Doug contemplates idle scenarios. Santi says he has to do, uh, has work to do with talking to folks or else it's idle time. So, Doug is safe. Santi was being proposed to the target. I think Dane's talk with Delarom didn't go as smoothly as either of them had hoped. And also he recognizes that Santi could get an idle plate on him. Uh, so, Santi's kind of off the table. Tim, another Doug ally, is also a Dane ally. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Doug's safe. Santi appears to be safe because of potential idols. And now it seems to be Abby or... Uh, I don't even remember who... It seems to be like Abby or, or, or Dane. Abby's late to tribal and is attending via phone while she gets there. Delarum says it's going to be messy. Doug says he was quiet last tribal because he knew Sadie was going. Angie says Abby called out the idol to save herself, uh, which Andrew asks Abby through the phone <laughs> that Delarum's got why she called out Doug. She says it's to show that he's lying to people. Angie says she's putting trust in the guys. Tim's asked about the roommates in the game and he says there's a feeder that they're running the game time to split up some pairs and then Abby arrives in person no idols get played Abby gets a vote Dane gets a vote Delarum gets a vote Abby gets a vote Dane gets a vote Delarum gets a vote so we've got a 2-2-2 two, two, two split on Abby Dane and Delarum and Abby is voted out here so the episode that Abby seems to get a little, little, little bit more time in the sun uh playing playing hard making some moves she gets voted out um yeah <laughs> abby uh was always kind of an interesting character and player to me she wasn't the most active but when she kind of stepped it up here i was impressed um but her and delarum couldn't fully get dane in and dane i think was nervous about an idol going to santi um so one pair of roommates is split up. Everyone seems to be nervous about Doug, except Santi and Tim. Uh, and even Tim's a little nervous. Uh, Doug has three idols heading into final six. Delarom is now roommateless. Angie has something with Dane and Tim, and vice versa. So, it potentially could be Doug is in trouble heading into the next episode. Penultimate episode. Doug tells Delarum he was going to vote Dane, but he learned there was a plan against him if he wasn't immune. 
he tells her he knows that she told people about his idol and she says it was for Abby and that he's the biggest threat. She asks who's next. He says Dane. He says he trusts her and Santi the most. Um, <laughs> she says, I want to get out, Doug, but I can't. Doug fills Santi in about the conversation. Doug in confessional says he'd be salty if he got caught before the end. Uh, and Dane talks to Tim about Doug having an idol or idols. Dane thinks Doug will take Dilaram to the end, even over Santi. Dane is confident Angie and Tim won't flip on him. Angie thinks she's on the, to the chopping block. Doug is safe with idols. Three idols. I just wanted to remind you. They only know about two. <laughs> Tim and Confessional wants out Santi since he's closer with Doug. Angie thinks she has to stick with Tim and Dane, but also thinks Tim's using her and wants to go to Final 3 with Delarom. She's worried that if Santi wins immunity, Tim could go for her. Uh, Tim and Doug talk about Santi getting jury votes at the end. Doug in Confessional says he goes along with Tim and Dane when they talk about booting Santi, but isn't with it. Uh, lots of stuff being brought up here. Doug kind of in danger. Uh, Angie nervous about Tim, not nervous about Dane. Uh, Santi being brought up as a potential jury threat when Doug and Tim talk about him. Uh, and Tim potentially nervous about Santi too. Doug says if he wins the challenge he can give Santi an idol. Uh, the challenge involves locks and counting things. It goes on for a while. There's some funny edits. Uh, because it goes on for a while. Tim ultimately wins immunity. Dilaram and Santi talk about booting Dane over ice cream. She tells him that Doug has two idols. Dilaram says that she wants him out. He tells Doug. <laughs> uh, Santi in confessional says Dilaram staying is now good for him and that Angie staying is too, but she's harder to read. Doug talks about how this game is a web of lies and how Santi and Dilaram have not lied to him. Angie tells Doug she wants to vote Dane. He can't tell if she's lying or not, uh, or if she wants Santi. She tells Dane that Doug pitched his name. They talk about going for Santi. She talks about liking Santi and how they're friends, but he's with Doug. Uh, Angie says this is the time for the lower players to take out a big one. And Doug talks to him about how nobody but him would take him to the end. Tim then pitches Santi. <laughs> Tim talks about how Angie and Doug used to seem down for booting Santi, but not anymore. It's getting messy, guys. Oh my gosh. Dane calls Tim and says Delarom and Santi are voting for him. Tim says Doug won't vote that way if he tells him not to. We'll see. Tim thinks they can get out Santi with Doug and Angie. Doug tells Santi that Tim texted him about voting Santi. Santi's nervous. Doug gives him an idol. Doug talks about in confessional how Santi told him they would go to the end together because his friendship means more to him. Dilaram and Angie talk for the first time in its final six, <laughs> which is funny, uh, but good on them for at least making it happen. We talk about voting together and getting Dane in and having a 3-2-1 split on Doug. Uh, Doug and Tim talk. Doug says that Angie told them she wouldn't vote Santi. Doug feels confident that Santi, Tim, and Delarum won't vote him out. He's right on two of those people, I'd say. <laughs> uh, we make it to Tribal. I will say, before we get into this mess. So, Doug and Santi are tight with each other. Santi, er, Tim and Doug are tight with each other. Tim's nervous about Santi potentially being cl too close with Doug. Tim is working with Angie and Dane. Uh, Dane and Angie are working with Tim as well, but kind of recognize he's still loyal to Doug, and uh, they're targeting Doug, and they're trying to bring Delarom into it, which means potentially leaving Tim out of it. Uh, Santi's name's kind of out there, but Doug gave him an idol. Doug also has two more idols, and some of the players know about one of them. Not everybody does. Nobody knows that he has three. Or at the final six. <laughs> at Tribal. Uh, Dilaram is open about Santi's name being out there. Doug's asked about idols and gives a fluff answer. Dane mentions being voted least likely to win and how he's been targeted since then. Santi mentions Zane getting votes but staying alive. Angie says she doesn't want to go to Rocks. Anders asks Doug about people talking openly about who they're voting for despite no idols being played. 
Dane calls out friendship playing a role in people not voting for each other. Dane says he doesn't have that much power and that he could be a good choice to be taken to the end. And then we get the votes. No idols get played, even though it's final six and Doug has three. Dane gets two votes. Doug gets two votes. Doug looks very stressed. Doug gets a vote and Dane gets a vote. So it's tied. 3-3 three, three on Doug and Dane. Uh, which means Tim voted for Dane. Delarom, Angie, and... Uh, and Dilaram, Angie, and Dane voted for Doug. Doug didn't play any of his three idols. San Santi also didn't play uh, an idol that Doug gave him. And Tim didn't know that uh, the others were voting Doug. So now on the revote. Dane gets a vote, Doug gets a vote. Doug gets a vote, Dane gets a vote. It's tied again, uh, and they have to deliberate. So we're at final six. Doug could potentially be voted out with three idols in his pocket. Well, one in Santi's pocket. Uh, Doug hugs Dane and mouths, I'm going to kill you to Tim. Tim says he'll vote Dane. Santi says he'll vote Dane too. Delaram is trying to flip them to Doug. Tim says Dane lied to him and he's upset about it. Angie apologizes to Tim for leaving him out. Doug says something along the lines of vote Dane or go to rocks. Doug says he has an idol to use at final five. Angie says Doug will win unless they vote him out. Tim says he thinks if he flips, he and Santi will be picked off, which I think is a fair concern. Dilaram asks about how Tim and Santi think they can win against Doug. And then they go to Rocks, which means that Doug will be at final five with three idols, potentially two if Santi draws the odd rock. Um, but Angie draws the odd rock. She has talked about not wanting to go to rocks a few times and is rocked out. Uh, everyone else hugs. Doug says he promises an idol will be played when Andrew's asked about it. And Dane says he has 16 idols. Um, we kind of zoomed through that, but just to recap, we're at final six. Doug was not immune. He did not play any of his three idols. Caught three votes. Uh... And then on the revote, Tim and Santi didn't flip. So Santi drew a rock for Doug. Tim didn't flip on Doug. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then Angie drew a rock, which is unfortunate. Angie, I think, was the hardest player out of her, Dane, and Delaron for sure. Um, and it thinks that she's just short of making the finale. But uh, nice work on Delarom, Dane, and Angie for making this happen. Big props to Doug for Tim and Santi not flipping on him. Uh, he should have played at least one of his idols, though. Or San Santi should have played. Like, an idol should have been played. Um, for sure. But also, to be at the final six, have people draw rocks for you at the final six, despite everyone saying you're the biggest threat, and you both kind of know it and Doug has three idols. It's kind of insane. Like, it's kind of, like, bad on Doug, but also amazing on Doug. Uh, impressive on everyone else's... Uh, on Delaram, uh, Dane, and Angie's part for almost pulling off an insane blindside. Um, but Angie, unfortunately, draws the odd rock and goes home. This season is insane. <laughs> Let's get into the finale. Um... Dilaram's shook. She can't believe that Santi and Tim didn't flip. Doug was surprised and sad that Tim flipped on him for Doug. Doug was going to play an idol after Santi played one, but since Santi didn't play one, Doug didn't play one. He also says he was so close to being the dumbest player in Survivor Maryland history. And that would have been hard to defend, yeah, if he went home there. Uh, I also would have gotten it, but it would have been like the ultimate hubris downfall sort of thing. Uh... Angie said at Tribal that she was voting Dane, which, according to Tim, got him to vote Dane. Santi was shook by Delaram and Angie coming together. Uh, Delaram called out Doug's two idols, and he says he has them, and if one of him sought your Tim wants immunity, the other two get idols. Uh, Tim's annoyed to learn about Doug's two idols. He thought he only had one. Challenge is a balancing thing, which Santi wins. Delaram knows it's her or Tim. I feel like she says her or Dane, and I wrote the wrong thing, but it's fine. Doug gave Tim an idol. Doug says it's Dane and that they don't even have to meet about it. Delarome apologizes to Doug and also says that she's going to vote for him the rest of the game. 
Tim Santin and Dalaram talk. They discuss beating him in jury votes. Uh, oh, but I think about maybe beating Doug or not beating Doug. Tim says he regrets saving Doug a little bit since he had a chance to make a power move. Uh, Dalaram pitches the final three to Tim and Santi. She thinks before last round she couldn't win. Now she might have a chance. She, she took a big swing. Santi says he doesn't think he has a chance and that if he was a jury member, he wouldn't vote for him over Doug. So a lot of doubt creeping into everyone's minds. Uh, at least Tim and Santi who, you know, really want to bet for Doug there. Santi says all game he wanted to beat Doug. He talks about being best er, friends with Doug and becoming close now. Survivor brought them closer and how uh, Doug is his best friend. He's torn about cutting him or not, and he knows it would hurt Doug, but hopes he would understand. Doug in confessional talks about playing the best, for, best fourth place game again. Very concerned about being cut at the finish line. Doug talks to Dane about him or Delaram. Dane's pitch is that if he's going to lose, he'd want to lose to the best. Doug's worried that if he loses the next challenge that Tim and Santi uh, would cut him for Delaram. Dane's down to get ahead because second's better than fifth. Dane, uh, Doug thinks Dane could have a chance to beat him at the end. Doug talks about being upset if Dane booted him at three. And Doug also considers playing his third idol for Dane. So there's a lot going on. But but not really. Uh, Dane goes home. Anders asks Doug about last travel and his claim to play his idol. Tim's asked about Doug's idol and Tim says Doug gave him one. Tim says him, Santi, and Doug are voting for Dane. Dane is salty about Tim and calls him submissive. Tim goes off about his game and how uh, Doug and Santi, or about how he's used Doug and Santi and how he saved Dane. Uh, Sant says that just because he didn't go with Dane last time doesn't mean he's been riding Doug's coattails. Which is, that's fair. Uh, Santi's asked about potentially going home to Rocky. He says he would have been salty. Uh, Doug plays an idol for himself. Doug gets two votes. Dane gets a vote. Delaram gets a vote. And then Dane gets another vote. So Dane goes home at final five. Anders tells him there's going to be one more jury member. And that it will be a final three. Delaram wanted him to play his idol for her, but he didn't. Tim realized he could have gone home if he gave Delaram an idol. If Doug... Uh, played an idol for Dane. Could have been. Uh, uh, I don't want to spoil the Survivor season. Anyways, final four challenge. It's a best of style challenge, which Tim wins, which means for the first time in I don't know how long, Doug it doesn't have immunity or idols, and it's the final four. The the spot that he's worried about getting uh, cut at. Uh, Tim says he felt bad before, during, and after the challenge. Doug is quite pressed. Tim tells Doug he knows he's had, uh, he has a better chance against Santi. Tim and Santi talk. They talk about how the move is to vote out Doug, but they don't want to. Santi says Doug is going to guilt him. Tim in confessional says they don't want to hurt Doug in real life just for this game. Santi talks about making a decision and having to live with it. Doug and Santi talk. Doug talks about how he's had their backs and mentioned choosing them over Sadie. Santi says Doug is one of his best friends and he wouldn't lose that for a game. Santi says booting Doug is best for his game, but if it changes their friendship to tell him, then he won't vote him. And Doug says, I think you already know the answer to that. Doug says he doesn't want to win by guilt tripping them and being a crybaby. Santi says he's going to vote Doug, but he can't do it after seeing him like that uh he's a nice confessional about how he knows the move isn't popular but his friendship means more and he has to make the decision and he tells doug their friendship will last a lifetime um and he wants to be validated by making his own choice um i find this fascinating uh for so many reasons i know it's like the boring like the, the game play like exciting things oh, he's gonna cut his best friend but like so much more complicated like their roommates their relationship is a lot more real than the, the quickly made ones on survivor proper like they've known each other for a long time they've been roommates uh they have to continue being roommates they've built up a friend and game relationship through this as well uh I like that Santi talks about making the choice and being validated in it, because um, in a sense, like, cutting Doug for the game 
it's not a choice that he's making for himself it's like that's the popular choice like I, I i don't know i think it's really interesting i get that everyone is probably upset that Santi doesn't want to vote out doug though uh doug and tim talk doug says he was upset by tim uh voting or not by tim voting against him at the final five but by tim saying it was just a game Tim asks him if he wants him to vote for Delaram. Tim has a confession about separating game and personal and how he doesn't want to make a move against his friend. Uh, Tim says to Doug it's whether or not he will make it a tie or not. Tim se seems like he's going to vote out Delaram uh, and says he knows the move doesn't help his case in terms of writing Doug's coattails, but it would hurt their friendship. And Delaram learns that Santi's not voting for her and uh, is, not, is, vo is voting her and she's mad. She says, cry me an effing river, which becomes the uh, episode title. And it's a really good one. Uh, she texted Tim. And Tim's also against her. Uh, <laughs> she's like, this is, sur she says the word idiot so much in this finale. Uh, she says, Doug is selfish for making them feel this way. I think that's kind of valid. I, don't, I think it's a lot more complicated than that, but it's also a valid look at the situation. At Tribal Council, they're open about how it's going to be three to one on Delaram. Tim says he feels confident in this game, but that Doug's reaction changed his mind. Anders talks about Dane's submissive comment, and Tim pushes back on it, saying he voted against Doug last round. Delaram talks about friendships getting in the way of the game and how Doug is playing them. She goes off and says they're being dumb. Doug admits that him being voted out would hurt the friendship. Uh, Delaram is annoyed by that. Uh, she says, I would be an idiot if I voted for an idiot to win this game. Tim says if someone was in his and Santi's position, they'd get it, and then they vote out Delaram 3-1. to one. I think Tim makes a good point in saying um, if someone was in their position, they'd get it. I, I think it's probably a lot more complicated than... It seems to all the other players who aren't real life friends with Doug or weren't real life friends with Doug before the game and then played the whole game with Doug. Um, I don't think it's valid to be annoyed by it, <laughs> but everyone knew coming into this game that they all knew each other, so there's that too. Anyways, Doug talks to Feshel about the three of them coming so far, and he wasn't trying to be a bad friend. Tim says Final Four is like a warm-up for Final Tribal. Uh, Santi stands by his move, says it wasn't a weakness. Sadie then... Sadie booted out player Sadie, eighth place Sadie, texts Tim and Santi about how Doug will win unanimously and how the season was a waste of time, and sends screenshots of her and Doug talking uh, about them and how... He said he was fake mad to Tim, and Doug also texts Sadie that Tim played better than Santi, who just does what Doug tells him to, and this uh, really upsets them. Uh, Santi's hurt because he voted for Delrom based off the friendship, and, uh, you know, Sadie's sending receipts of that maybe being, uh, potentially being BS. Um, it's real, it's real lame, uh, real sword loser mentality stuff from Sadie there uh that bumped me out still bumps me out getting annoyed think, having to talk and think about it again Doug talks about how he and Sadie are friends outside of the game and that they always talk uh in real life so game stuff will slip in here and there it is against the rules and that will come up uh Santi was mad at Doug and told him he needed space Santi had a day without talking to Doug thought about how upset Doug was at Final Four and whether or not that was real or just gameplay. Uh, Doug apologized by writing a letter and told Santi and Tim to shred his game at Final Tribal. Doug does not want to win by crying his way to the end. Tim knows the jury could be mad and bitter. Santi thinks he could look stupid uh, because he thinks he could win. And even though Sadie says it's 8-0-0, he thinks he has a shot. And he says he's controlled the perception of him well. That is what we have heading into Final Tribal. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> I hate the, the text stuff. Uh, it's just, it's just sore loser stuff. Like you just gotta wait a few days. If, even if you did that a few days later, that's still sore loser stuff. But like doing it while the game's still going, uh, I hate it so much. Anyways, Final Tribal Council. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Uh, Doug says he admits talking to Sadie about the game and apologizes. He says he wasn't trying to manipulate his best friends to get there, and he wants their vote if he thinks if they think he played the best. Santi says he's no, he knows he's coming in with lower odds, but he's played a good game, hopes they have an open mind, and asks for hard questions. Tim says uh, he deserves to be here more than the others combined, and he played hard week to week, won the last challenge, and was active from day one. Morgan gives Santi props for being a threat on Shikasha, but having that threat go away. He says he knew he was a target coming into the merge, and he had to switch it up or he'd go home. He actively appeared less active, coming into the merge and didn't get votes cast against him. Uh, she gives Doug props and asks her stuff about his game that she didn't know, and he talks about the roommate stuff and his alliance of five. Amanda talks about being willing to vote out friends and asks him about him sitting next to Doug and Santi, and how he hasn't shown why he should win next to Doug, and asks about ideal final threes uh tim says he was given the choice of hurting a friendship or not he does not regret his choice and it wasn't him being submissive he says his ideal final three was with santi and delaram and says he couldn't stick his neck out for her uh, santi talks about wanting angie at the end but she became a threat to win also talks about how despite the idols and friendship stuff that he still thinks he can win the game doug says his final three was initially tim and sadie then delaram and josh but it changed a lot and he cut a lot of people in the game that were uh, against him. Josh mentions he likes them all and does not like that friendship made things weird at the end. So it's frustrating to see them not flip on Doug at six. And he gives Santi props for his game and going undercover. Uh, Santi says he was still playing. He wished he had won more challenges to prove he was that guy. It says he was mad that Angie and Dilaram lied to him and Tim and Doug were honest at the final six. Sadie says this is not for a million dollars, but is the closest thing they will get to play the real thing, and uh, says it's frustrating that two people there weren't playing to win, and if they were Doug, uh, and if they were playing, Doug wouldn't be there, and then she talks up Doug more. Um, she also reiterates that it was a waste of time, and that it came down to like friendship and stuff. Uh, again, I want to say, everyone playing this game knew Doug and Santi were roommates, and knew that they were, were friends with Tim from the beginning and they didn't do anything about it so um i think you shouldn't be bitter about it you should have you know there were so many times where the moves could have been made sooner and they weren't and i liked it because i liked the big player staying in longer but you can't not make you can't pull the trick you can't not pull the trigger and then be upset about it when you get taken out first that's that's just what i think abby says she wants to stay friends but will roast them says doug is the biggest spineless bee he lies a lot and made her and his friends feel bad and says he can't uh, or says he can take jasmine on a date when he wins uh he says he didn't threaten their friendship but admitted that it would have affected it uh santi says felt like an ultimatum it says he isn't insecure about their friendship and felt bad for seeing his friend that sad he does not regret the decision since it would have hurt their friendship Abby calls Tim Doug's bitch, and before he was Amanda's bitch, and asks when he was his own bitch. <laughs> uh, he says he was never anyone's bitch, and he turned on Amanda and would have turned on Doug, um, and that they had different allies. Tim says that they should be mad at Doug, not him or Santi, which I think is a really good point, honestly. Uh, if you're mad about the friendship stuff, you should direct that anger at Doug and not him or Santi. I think that is very, very valid kind of creates a shift here um angie asks doug why he thinks tim or santi should beat him he says they had his fate in their hands and played a great game to get far under the radar with different relationships angie says she's voting for doug but asked santi to change her mind uh he says that uh, he talks about dane and dilaram getting respect for their games and his is impressive he didn't catch a vote and he switched the perception of him at the merge and adapted to stay alive. Delaram gives Doug props for voting her out. Says she would have won if she made it to the end. Then gives him shit for manipulating his friends. Uh, she asks them to describe themselves in one word. And it's a roast trap. She just wants to call them idiots. Uh, Santi talks about Liam sitting here at the end if it wasn't for him. Says he blindsided Ivy and Evan. Uh, I don't think you should call back to pre-merge stuff, but I get it. 
He says they're doing a disservice to the game by not being open-minded, and he made good moves and was a target. I think that part's valid. Doug talks about them being called idiots, but mentions everyone knew all game that Doug, Santi, and Tim knew each other from the start. Okay. <laughs> Dane gives Santi and Tim stars that said, you tried, but then on the other side it says, wait, no you didn't. Uh, Tim rips his up, Santi keeps says, at first tries to like put it on his chest, which I was like, okay. Uh, Dane says he can't respect Doug for breaking the rules of the game with the Sadie thing, even though Doug played the best game. And he says that the jury should have an open mind. Tim says Doug could have been playing them in Final Four and says he wouldn't have reacted that way if he was in that position. Santi says he feels disrespected by the jury and that he did this for Doug, forgave him for the Sadie thing, and says that Doug is here because of their friendship. Santi tells the jury he shouldn't take it out on them, and that he's upset that they come they came in with their minds made up. Thanks, Dane, for keeping an open mind. Uh, he asks for their Dane asks them for their final words, like what what you say when you get voted out. Doug says he did the big three, out what up play at last, played hard, and they all saw it. Santi says he played a great game, he lied, he was loyal, won the most challenges, didn't depend on others the first half of the game, and had the biggest target early on tim doesn't regret his game is upset he wasn't asked about it he switched up his game and worked with different people the votes almost there delaron votes for doug dane votes for tim josh votes for santi says he didn't like the ultimatum and gives santi props for defending his game sadie votes for doug and now we see the votes pile in have a doug vote a santi vote and a tim vote so all three have a vote then they all three get another vote, so it's tied 2-2-2. Two, 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 uh, two, two, two. Doug and Santi get another vote, so it's 3-2-2. Two, two. Um, so it's a tie on Doug and Santi. It was not 8-0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, the Survivor Maryland tiebreaker rule isn't that the, um, the third runner-up, or I guess it would be the second runner-up, Votes. It's not like uh, this was before Ghost Island aired, uh, so we didn't know the CBS Survivor tiebreaker rules. So it's not ten votes for a winner. It's everyone that everyone revotes between Doug and um, Santi, or at least the people that voted for Tim. And after the revote, Doug and Santi get a vote. Doug and Santi get a vote. Doug and Santi get a vote. It's tied three three, and Santi gets a vote. Then Santi wins the season. Santi beat Doug, and that's how the season ends. What a what a twist. Um, I remember when I first watched the season, I was kind of disappointed. I thought, wow, Doug made it to the end. He should win. But there's such an insane shift. I would say from the final six, there's a shift in the terms of, in terms of like Doug is finally being targeted. Like his name is coming up. Um, there's an even bigger shift that final four where doug is not safe and it becomes it, it never really felt before like doug was all powerful because of his pre-game relationships it i'm sure that played a role but like tim and santi were well santi was kind of like i don't want to vote doug out i want to beat doug tim was not saying that throughout the season he it talked about like wanting to go to the end with doug having some concerns at the end but he was never like i will ride or die for doug um and even santi wasn't saying that santi was like i want to beat doug um but it shifts at the final four doug is not safe uh he tells them that their their friendship dynamic will change which you can say is intentional guilt tripping or not i think I think he's being honest like i don't think he's saying it so he gets to the end i think he's saying it because it's true and also that will get him to the end um but the friendship stuff comes into play at final four and doug who has played this monster of a game uh loses by a tiebreaker and then by two votes or i guess three votes but a real a real shift in the season uh it went from 8 to not 800. Um, a, a question I initially had before rewatching and then watching the post episode things was like, so if Sadie didn't leak the text, does Dane vote Doug? Uh, does does Doug win the season? Anders, the host, seems to think no. Uh, he thinks it did switch things, but that 
Um, Dane, Dane's role there and at Final Tribal shifted things. People f seemed to feel more comfortable voting for who they had the better relationship, and you can see throughout the season. Santi had a great relationship with Josh. Um, Tim had a uh, Dane had a good relationship with Tim. Angie and Santi had a good relationship. The relationships weren't. It wasn't just Doug was running the show. Doug was running the show, but there were a lot of different relationships this season and a lot of different moves and paths. Um, and Santi takes it. Uh, I would have loved if Doug won because I think he is a top tier player. Um, even if he'd gotten fourth place, I'd still say Doug is a top tier player. Um, he did have a big ego, but I, I think he kind of earned it throughout the season. I love Santi. Santi's arc, though, of like, he wanted to beat Doug. He knows that he probably can't beat Doug. Um, he just, the, the, the passion that he has when he talks about making his own decision, I really liked. I found it, um, very admirable i think it's valid to i used to not think it was to choose like friendship over a win but it you know i Strar, especially college star is a lot more complicated when it comes to relationships and pre-game relationships and how things are after the season and um i don't know i wish i wish santi crushed final tribal more i thought he did an okay job um but if he was like uh, if he was as passionate at Final Trouble as he came off in the confessionals before, I would have really loved it. Because um, hearing him talk about making his own decision and um, and all that, I, I really liked. It made me... I knew he was winning the season already because I'd watched it before, but uh, the first time I didn't feel great about him as a winner, I felt okay about it. But I was mostly sad that Doug lost, where this time I was... Still sad that Doug lost, but I felt better about Santi as a winner, and I really liked the way his story shook out. Um, Tim, I think, needed to go to the end with Dane and Angie, but I think had he done that, could have lost to <laughs> Dane or Angie. I think I, I don't know where his his chances to win went down the drain, but uh, I say that, but he still got two votes. You know, he wasn't drawing dead uh, by any means, but. It was a hard, it was a hard path for Tim, no matter what. Um, but the season as a whole, so I, I, I can understand someone looking at the post merge and being like, Dunn ran, Doug ran the rest of the game and then lost. That's lame. Um, I, I, I liked watching him run the game the first time, but was disappointed when he lost, and I was lower on the season because of it. But on the surreal watch, I had no intention of binging it as quickly as I did, but I was captivated. I was into it every episode. I loved the big players. I loved watching them um, play around the, the, the less targeted players and keeping them complacent. Like, Doug and or Santi did a good job making Josh feel safe. Um, a lot of people did a good job making Amanda feel safe for a while. Like, uh, seeing that happen was interesting seeing shots taken or potential shots come up i just i liked i liked it a lot i don't know i i was never bored on this rewatch and even though the way the season shook out uh you could be like from the end of the pre-merge into the post-merge you could be like that's that was so predictable i don't know i i was still into it the whole time i enjoyed it i liked doug getting through uh untargeted uh, that getting through despite being targeted um i'm at peace with the end of the season i think it's really interesting the way things shifted from final four onward not necessarily in a good way but in an interesting way um it's kind of like like terrapin trials has a very dark ending and i talked about when uh, uh, when i covered it how it's hard for me to watch but it's really interesting to think about uh this is less hard to watch, uh, and still interesting to think and talk about, so I don't know, I felt really good about the season watching it again, uh, I went through it fast, I liked it, I liked Doug, I liked Santi, I like most of this cast, um, I was upset that Sadie pulled some bitter Betty stuff, I wish that didn't have to happen, um, and I'd like to see how different things could have been without that, I still think people would have been mad at Doug, 
For the Final Four stuff, though, uh, I don't think that goes away. I think it's just, I think Final Troubles may be less about that and more about everyone's games. Because I think I do think Tim and Zandri's games are more interesting than they're given credit for. But um, I liked the season. I did. Uh, I'm surprised how much I liked it. I, I, a lot of it was just, it, it could have been that it, I knew it would be the last one I'd, I'd cover like this. Um, maybe that's why... I, I don't know, but I, I I binged it and I really liked it and I watched uh, pretty much all of the the post episode recap discussions, which I didn't need to, <laughs> but I, I just liked them. I liked hearing about the season. Uh, I'm really glad that Anders and Aaron did that. Uh, all of their guests were fun. Uh, one of their guests in particular made me real excited for the next season. Um, but yeah, th this season, I liked it. I think it's really interesting. I think it's fun. Uh, I can understand someone not liking it, but I was captivated. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say without talking in circles more, but uh, it took me by surprise. I used to have this as one of my lower College Survivor seasons, and now it was uh, one of the quickest ones I've watched, even though I didn't plan on watching it quickly. I did, and I really liked every episode. I liked... Uh, the, the way players talked about themselves and each other and how they moved and how things shook out and the ending is fascinating and uh, it's going to stick with me for a while and I used to love uh, New Beginnings a, a lot more because uh, it was a more fluid game um, but I, I don't know I, I loved this season I, I did and uh I'm gonna wrap it up there because I'm just saying the same things over and over. But this season, very interesting one to think about and watch, and I liked it. And I'm excited for the next one, uh, whenever that comes out. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Goodbye.